Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about in the study of kinematics in this MCAT series is some key concepts that I want you to be aware of. Now, kinematics is the study of an object's motion, the description of an object's motion, and we're going to do a whole bunch of that throughout this series. But I want to introduce you to just some key ideas that are important when we think about objects' motion. There are a whole bunch of more detailed mini lectures on all of these ideas and a lot of practice problems that you can look at both at a very introductory level as well as a more um, advanced level in terms of that introductory physics scope. And so this particular mini lecture is just going to be a brief overview and then I encourage you to look at some of those additional videos for more details if you so choose. So when we talk about an object's motion, we can ask ourselves a, a number of questions. The first question that we're going to ask and is the topic of this particular mini lecture is how far the object moves. So where is it located in space and how far does it move? So when we ask, answer the question how far about an object's motion, we can do that in two different ways. The first way is what we call the distance. Now the distance is related to the total lengths that that object moves. When we consider distance, we have to consider the path that that object is taking. And we add up the lengths along that path to get the total amount of motion of that object. So let's look at an example. Let's imagine that we have a farmer and she is going to walk along her rectangular field. And so her, she starts at her farmhouse and she walks one kilometer to the west, or excuse me, to the east. Then she walks half a kilometer south, takes all the way back one kilometer to the west, and then she ends up back at her farmhouse, which is a half a kilometer, additional half a kilometer. So when I want to think about her total distance that she traveled along, around that farmyard, we know she went one kilometer plus another half a kilometer plus another kilometer plus another half a kilometer. And so she traveled three kilometers in total distance, the total length. I paid attention to the amount of length she traveled and I paid attention to its path. The other way we can talk about how far an object moves is what's known as its displacement. The displacement of an object is a description of the object's change in position over the motion I'm interested in. So it's a description of the change in position. It looks at, over the motion that we're interested in, it looks at the final position of that object, then that final being when I'm done with the motion I'm interested, relative to the initial position of that object. So if we go back to our example of the farmer, she started at her farmhouse. She walked all the way around her farmyard and she ended up back at her farmhouse. So her change in position over the motion that I care about didn't change. She ended up exactly back where she started. You can imagine that if her partner was sitting there in that farmhouse when she left and closed their eyes and just waited for them to tell them when to open their eyes, the farmer could have walked around and ended up back next to her partner, or she could have stayed there the whole time, and the partner wouldn't have known the difference. So in the case of displacement, the path doesn't matter. It's path independent. She could have also ran to Target and come back, and the, pa the partner would have been none the wiser. So we only care about the object's change in position. So in this example, our change in position, our displacement, which we represent often with an X or any one of the coordinate systems, we can talk about it as a change, that delta symbol, a change in position. This, in this case, would be zero kilometers. She ended up 
right back where she started. Now, if I were just looking in like a single dimension, we would also talk about representing the final position minus the initial position gives me my change in position. So let's say we are looking on the x dimension. If the object ended exactly where it started, my displacement would be zero. So this is a mathematical representation of that. Now, displacement is a vector. So remember we talked about, and if you haven't reviewed what a vector was, go back and look at to the, those lectures about vectors. Displacement is a vector, which means we have to consider direction. And this is going to become very important as we continue to work through our description of kinematics. So real briefly, just to give you that sense of how we use direction to describe displacement, I'm going to just look at this farmer walking to the left or east and west of her farmhouse. So if we imagine, here's our farmhouse. And the farmer walked one kilometer to the east, that's slightly different than the farmer walking one kilometer to the west. She ends up in, the, in two different locations, one to the east, one to the west. Her displacement then must be represented slightly differently. Her displacement in this case would be one kilometer east. Direction is important. Her displacement in the second case, one kilometer west. Direction is important. Distance, however, would be the same in both cases. She traveled one kilometer. She traveled one kilometer. So direction is going to be important. Now, we often designate direction in a single dimension as a positive and a negative. So we're going to use that nomenclature as we move forward in our discussion of physics. And again, in the other mini lectures that go into this in much more detail, it's going to define for you more specifically that positive and negative. But we wanted to give just a brief overview of the questions, how far. All right, good job.